up on the on the place and they got a sign out front that says really good food. And I was like, oh, okay. They got some pretty good stuff on this menu. Maybe I'll it here. Huh? Who are you? They call me flip-flops. Who are you? <laughs> flip-flops? What kind of name is that? Daryl, who is this guy? That's Slippers. Oh, 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 this is that pest you were telling me about. Tch, pest? The only pest I see is wearing a pair of flip-flops. <laughs> or beats a pair of moldy old slippers. Here, here's five bucks. Go get yourself a new pair at the dollar store. What? I've never been so insulted in my life. <laughs> Terrell, I'm out of here. Let me know when Sandals is gone, all right? It's not Sandals, just idiot. It's flip-flops. Get it right. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Looks like you'll have to hang out here every day, flip flops. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, Terrell. Good to see that clown flip flops ain't here. <laughs> we almost had some trouble. What do you mean? Uh, uh. Oh, great. You again. Don't you got a job or something? What? Job? I'm retired like you. The only reason I came by was to give Terrell a hand. Yeah, well, I'm constantly doing stuff around here. I help Terrell all the time. You didn't even ask him. Ha! Like what? Well, there was that one time, you know, the kid needed a hand with that tractor. I was all over it. Yeah, and you stood there and watched him struggle instead of helping him with it. Yeah, well, this isn't about that, okay? It's about this pest right here cramping my style, and I want him out of here. Shop ain't big enough for the both of us. <laughs> Come on, Terrell. You're gonna let this guy just talk to the F-man that way? Huh, <laughs> F-man. Now he's stealing my thunder, Terrell. Everybody knows that I'm famously known around here as the S-man. And I almost trademarked that, so you would have been in trouble, buddy. Yeah, we're not the only one that's clever enough to use the first letter of their name as a nickname. Yes, I am. Oh, and now my blood pressure's starting to rise, and that's not a good thing. I'm either gonna have to leave or bust you up. Yeah, well, mine isn't. Bring it on, old man. <laughs> Pterodactyl here, and today's video is gonna be on this here Coleman Power Mate generator. We're gonna add electric start to it. So the customer came in and wanted to know if I could add electric start to this generator. And I said, what engine's on it? And he said, a Tecumish. And I said, yeah, as long as we've got a place to mount the electric starter. And he goes, yeah, there's mountings for the electric starter. And he said the cover was bowed out. I said, okay, I can add electric start to that. So that's what we're gonna do. So we need donor parts. We need parts to add to this so we can add the electric start because we're gonna need an alternator so that way when the generator's running it can charge the battery and we're gonna need a flywheel that's got a ring gear on it because this one doesn't have the ring gear even though it's got this cover on it that looks like it's got the provision for electric start uh, there's no ring gear on the flywheel so luckily I've got a junk engine that's got those good parts on it, luckily for him. So he's got this generator mounted to this cart so he can wheel it around. So here's the donor engine that we're going to use. And for you grass rats that have been watching me for a long time, this was the 10 horse Tecumish engine that I had on my trailster. And I had some engine problems with it, so I got rid of it and I put that Kroller engine on it. So this is the engine we're gonna use. So this has got the electric starter on it, the right flywheel, and the only other change I'm gonna make is I wanna keep this high amp alternator and voltage regulator that's on here. So I went up to where I have all my spare used parts and I found a good Tecumish um, lower amperage, I think this might be four or seven amp alternator 
that we're going to use so it'll, it'll charge the battery. Uh, another thing we're going to do to this, because this happens a lot with people with generators that have electric start that are using them for emergency power. They put a battery on it and say the power doesn't go out for a couple of years. And then they go to start the generator and the battery's no good because they've been sitting dead for two or three years. Or they'll put a trickle charger on it and a lot of times those trickle chargers will overcharge or it'll ruin the battery over time and then they're in the same predicament. So I suggested to Ron, the owner of it, I said, why don't we put a little whip on there like this? And then you can add another whip to a battery, say, off your lawn tractor. So that way, when you want to start the, the generator for like emergency power, you can just take the battery out of your lawn tractor and if you've got this quick connect on it you can just plug it into the generator and start the generator and you could be done with it and then when you're done pull it off and he said that's a good idea because I've already got one of these on my tractor that I plug a trickle charger into to keep the battery up over the winter time so I said all right we can add one but I said if we do that we really don't need to put an alternator on there and he said, just put the alternator on there anyway. Whether I use it to charge a battery or not, at least it's got an alternator in case I decide to just put a permanent battery on there. At least it'll charge it while it's you know running. I said, okay, it's up to you, we can do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull all the parts off of here that we need and get this out of our way. And then we'll put the generator up here and start swapping everything over. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention, that when this was on the Cushman trail stir, I had the start button already wired into the cover, so that's a plus for him. So that way we don't have to hook up a separate push button. It's all there, so all he's gotta do is hit the button and start the generator. So I thought I'd, I'd mention that too, that that's already all done. So this should be a pretty, pretty quick and easy transformation. There's, there are some wires hooked up in here. And one of them is a starter wire. So let me get that disconnected. I don't think I have the right tool here for that. Or do I? All right, let me get a wrench. Okay, I got my wrenches to disconnect this. Now I've got a set of these old Craftsman. These I guess are uh, distributor wrenches or something. They're real thin, which is what I like because a lot of times you gotta back up this nut with a wrench and then these thicker wrenches don't want to fit in there so I like to use one of these thin ones to back it up because a lot of times when you go to remove this nut this wants to go with it and sometimes you can break this little cap on the starter and then that makes for a bad day so now that we got this disconnected I can feed that wire through And this black wire here is going to ground, and that goes in the middle of the switch. This other black wire here, this is for our low oil shutdown feature. So he's going to get an upgrade on that too. And then this green one is our kill wire to the coil. We'll disconnect that. And then plus I'm gonna have to make the wires, oh look at that came right off. I 
I'll have to release this wire. I should probably just cut this. But if you notice on his generator, he doesn't have the light up switch. This will light will flash if the oil is low. So he's going to get upgraded to that. And then this push button switch that I used is an Oregon switch. It's a starter switch for a snapper. There's the part number in case you're interested in getting that type. I know a lot of auto parts stores will sell that little push button, but that's the one I used. You know, it's the Forrest Gump, those old Forrest Gump snapper mowers. This is the starter switch for that. So we can leave that hooked up. So let me get a pair of wire cutters. And I'm gonna cut this other heavy red wire so we can remove this cover. And I'm gonna take this voltage regulator off of here. This was a, a Kroller. Kroller voltage regulator that I used on that Cushman because on that Cushman I needed a higher amp alternator system so I could run the lights and everything. So I want to save that in case I use another Tecumish in the future. And we could take the starter off. That 3 8 yeah. Now I'm going to have to get a quarter inch drive socket. This socket's too fat. So I need a 3 8 quarter inch drive to get in there so I can get that starter off. So I removed the starter and a lot of starters have the part number on it. I know uh, Crawlers do, and some Tecumishes do. And this starter is part number 33605. All right, now I'm gonna pop the flywheel. And I got my Tecumish flywheel knockoff tool. I would give you the part number for it, but there's not one on there. I've had this thing probably 40 years, but it's got the big hole. If you don't have a knockoff tool, put the nut back on. Make sure it's flush with the end of the crankshaft, and then you can whack on the end of it. You should use a flywheel puller, Terrell. You should use a puller. Eh, I use a puller sometimes, very rarely. Some instances I'll use a puller, but... For the most part, I use these knockoff tools. Now, let me see if I can do it without having to put a pry bar behind it. Oh yeah, it came off. I brought the par pry bar just in case. <laughs> so we weren't, hold on, let me get a pry bar. Maybe you should put your tools right next to where you're working, Terrell. Yeah, well maybe you should just shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I tell you to shut up? All right, so there's the flywheel. And that's how many magnets it's got. There's one missing. It's not missing. That's just how it comes. So there's that other alternator that I'm going to keep. The higher amp one. So we'll just leave that on there. I'll strip anything else that's good off of this and junk the rest. Because this motor's junk, junk, junk. Belongs in a scrap pile with Nikki shit. All right, so I gotta clean this lift off now so we can put the generator on there. So I'm not working on the floor like an animal because I know how to- You're gonna ruin your knees. You're gonna ruin your knees, but you should get a lift table. Yeah, well, I got one. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I feel like a nut, sometimes I don't. Okay, I already removed the bolts for the blower shroud, so I'm gonna take it off. 
and then we need to disconnect the wires for the switch and to the coil. So they've got that low oil shutdown tied in with the coil. So I'm gonna have to disconnect it from here because now we need to tie this in to our switch that's on the blower housing. And I don't know if this wire is going to be long enough. I may have to may have to uh, add a little wire to it. And then this tab, the special tab, so I'll just take that off and save that. I may be able to use that for something else. Put that in my little tray. And now we can remove the flywheel from here. Got to get my impact, get out of the way, Mr. Cameraman, before I knock you down. Smash your expensive camera. That's all right, I'll buy you a new one. And go all Sonny Corleone on you, like in The Godfather. Smash that photographer's camera and threw a bunch of money at him. That was great. Yeah, here you go. And that was improv, too, if you don't know about that movie. James Conn threw that in, and they said, yeah, go with it. Go with it, Jimmy. Okay. So, you can see the bosses are there, not Bruce Springsteen. The bosses are on the engine block for the alternator. So I will have to rob to save time. I will have to rob the screws off the other alternator. And then I also want to run these wires out this way. I want to run everything out this way. We're going to eliminate this wire here. Because this came off a tractor that had a Tecumish engine on it, a vertical shaft Tecumish. That was on a little riding mower, one of them little rear engine mowers. So this is for the headlights. Or no, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. No, this was the kill wire. That's right. This was the kill wire, and then this is the charge wire. So we're going to eliminate this. So I'll get my tool to release this off of there. There's our diode. See, there's a diode in there. That diode is soldered into that circuit. That's what changes it to DC from AC to DC by adding that diode in there. That's right. This was the kill wire. I'm sorry. I was saying it's for the headlights. No, it ain't for the headlights. All right, let me get my tool and release that and get that off of there and then get the screws for that. So a tarot fan recently had sent me this little kit, which has got hundreds of these little tools for releasing electrical clips and stuff. Now his name escapes me right now, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the nice gift. So I'm gonna choose this one here. And then you just go into the top and we're gonna bend that tab that's holding that down. And see it releases the wire. So what you're doing is you're pushing this tab down. So when this thing slides in and it pulls back, it locks on that tab. That's how that works. For those of you that didn't know that. So. And then what you do is when you go to reinstall it, you want to bend that up a little bit so it'll catch again. But we'll probably, I don't know if I'm going to use this or I'm going to put something else on there. We'll worry about that when I get to it. So now I can line that up. And it would help if I put it on the right way. Like this. 
hopefully I'll have enough wire. Because he's got this little tray here on this cart where he can put a battery. So that's why I gotta run everything out this way, if it's not too much trouble. If it's gonna be trouble, then I'll just run everything out this side and he can always add a plate, the customer. But he said he was just gonna use an auxiliary battery to start it, because he only uses this for emergency power. Now if you're a construction guy, say, or somebody who uses a generator a lot, Yeah, then you're going to want to put a regular, whoop, a regular dedicated battery on it. Uh-oh. Money's calling. Okay, this wire from the low oil shutdown that's got to go back to the switch, that's not going to be long enough, so I'm going to have to lengthen that wire. Now, these are the wires coming from our switch. So I can probably open up this hole and run the wires through. Because what we're gonna do is, we need one wire to go to the starter, and the other wire's gotta go to the battery. So that way when we hit the button, it makes a connection and sends the voltage from the battery through the switch to the starter. And then this is for our alternator. So this wire isn't long enough, so what I'll do is, I'll, I'll add a piece of wire to this, I'll leave this connector on it, or cut it off and put a different connector on it. But I still wanna make it removable. And then, the one wire that's coming right from the battery, I'll put another short piece of wire off of there with a connector on it. So that way, I can plug it into that short wire that's coming right from the battery. So that way when it's running, it's gonna be charging the battery. So I'll have to cut some of this heat shrink away so I can run a wire out this way to go to the starter and then this other one will be to the battery. And we'll make our connections, put the flywheel on, starter on, and uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, one thing we need to be concerned about is keeping this wire from contacting the flywheel. So it goes back behind here. So since I'm lengthening that wire, I'm gonna go ahead and shove it back behind that, this little baffle thing, hopefully without cutting into it. So I'll route that back there and then I'm gonna route it up behind the coil. And then I'll put the flywheel on and we'll make sure it's not gonna hit. Okay, I got the flywheel just stuck on there and I got that wire routed back through here and I routed it underneath these other two wires because we don't want it to come into contact with the flywheel because then it's just gonna short out or, di or disconnect the alternator then. And then since our push button is on this side, then that little wire I need to make, a little extension wire to go from here to there, won't be very long. And then I already went and cut the wire for the low oil shutdown. It was a brown wire, so I had some brown wire and I cut those connectors off and put my own insulated pull-aparts on there. And then I'll figure out how long this wire should be to go to the switch. And then this wire, I believe, is gonna make it to the switch. I believe this will be long enough. And then this is my little wire that's gonna go to that push button. Okay, I got the flywheel nut and the cup back on, I got it tightened down and I noticed that it's rubbing on the coil a little bit. So I'm gonna have to reset that air gap. So, good thing I rotated it over and checked that. So let me reset the air gap and then we'll uh, start putting that 
blower uh, cover back on. Oh, I gotta put the starter on too. Okay, I got my little whip on here because this is the wire that's gonna go to the battery. This is the wire that's gonna go to the starter. So now, I need to figure out how long to cut this wire. So I'll cut this right about there and crimp an end on there. I got the starter on. So we're getting there. A few more things. Now I got this little whip on there because this is what the customer wanted. This is what we agreed on. Now if you want to you know, wire in an actual bat battery, you know, you would hook up a, a regular battery cable to ground and then come off of this wire with an actual battery cable going to the, to the battery. But this customer we agreed on because he's afraid that he's gonna buy a battery and then it's gonna sit for two or three years and then when he's gonna go to start it, it's not gonna run. So I suggested, why don't we just hook it up this way and since he's already got the other half of this on his tractor, he's just, you know, if the power goes out, he's just gonna grab the battery out of his tractor and plug it in. So, I went ahead and just rigged up the other end on a battery so we could start this thing. Or see if it'll start, see if it'll work. But you know, maybe you want to do something like this to your to your generator that already has an electric start because you may be experiencing the same thing. You're buying batteries and then when you go to use the generator because the power hadn't gone out in a couple of years and the battery was bad and then you charged it and it went bad, you know, oh that's a good idea. I can just, you know, take the one out of my lawnmower and hook something up like this to it so that way I can uh, start it when I have to during a power outage for an emergency. So I'm just gonna see if it cranks over up here and if it does then we're gonna take it down and put it on the ground and, and start it. So here's our start button, got the starter wire all hooked up. And it was actually nice that I had cut that hole in there for that voltage regulator because it made it easy for me to go ahead and hook up uh, that one wire that was kind of tight because I didn't add any wire to it so I could hook that up. Alright, let's see if it'll crank over. <laughs> yeah! Alright, let's fire it up and see what happens. charging like a mad devil. Well, that alternator's bad. It's overcharging, it's gonna overcharge the battery. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that one on there with the voltage regulator, like I had on the Cushman. Okay, I got the other alternator now that I use the voltage regulator on there. And this is the red wire, which is the, gonna be the charge wire. So these are your two AC voltage going to the regulator and this is the red wire that's going to go back to charge the battery which I'm going to hook to here again. So I'm going to put the flywheel back on, hook all these wires back up, put the regulator back on and make sure it's not going to overcharge the battery. Alright, I got it all back together, got the voltage regulator and everything on there because we don't want it to overcharge because it is Tecumish crap. And I don't know if you noticed this beautiful Tecumish sticker on there. And look, that's me. Ha ha ha, yeah! All right, so let's fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. See what kind of voltage we got now.
So, little little messing around, but we got it. Should have did that in the first place, but I was trying to save that alternator and that regulator for something else. But I'll, I'll come across more of that crap in the future. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. I'm Terrell, in case you didn't know that, but you all know that. Right, Grass Rats? Follow me with your generators with no electric start, Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, check out the stuff we got, like this beautiful, gorgeous hoodie. Get that sticker too. Got that sticker on there. And we got this sticker too. Get both of them stickers if you got this Tecumseh crap. Tecumish. I said Tecumseh, that's not right. Tecumish. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! This guy's going to be happy. Take that! Get off of me! No, you get off of me! Take that, you little jerk! You're hurting my arms! You're hurting your own arms! Oh, man! This is great! Oh, man! This video's going to go viral! My eyes! My eyes! I can't see! My phone's ringing! Mine too! Hello, mother? Hello, father? Uh, I'm down here at Grass Rats Garage. Uh oh, they're in trouble now. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I'll be home right now. Okay, bye. No, no, I'll be right there. I gotta go. <laughs> an unexpected ending to that fight. I'm sure glad those two pests are gone. But just wait till they find out about that other guy that's been hanging around here. Snow boots. <laughs>